We got your weekend Apple news. Welcome back to the channel. So if you're new here or if you're not new, you know what I do here. I go through about 20 different Apple stories over the weekend. I actually have a beer. I show you what I'm drinking first. You guys can sit back and relax and have whatever you're having. We have a good time on the weekends. So sit back and relax. Let's get into about 20. I think I got 20 different Apple stories for the weekend today. And uh, without further ado, let's get into it. All right, so what do I have today? I have Buckle Down Oktoberfest German Style Lager, and I'll show you some examples of the can here. Again, enjoy what you want, and whether you have coffee, espresso, I'm having one beer on the weekend, no big deal. Anyways, I love Germany. It's probably a country, I've been there eight times now. I'm probably gonna move there eventually. Um, I love Munich, actually, it's kind of Bavarian region. But this is an Oktoberfest. It says it's a German style lager, but it looks more like a Marzen, if you know what that is, for basically around Oktoberfest. Kind of dark. Pretty smooth, though. Overall, it's pretty good. Buckletown, it's out of Lyons, Illinois, so it's a, another local beer for me. Anyways, enjoy your cappuccino or whatever you're doing there on the weekends, and let's get into the Apple news. All right, story number one. We've heard this for a while. For Mac Rumors, it says MacBook with foldable display will actually have an 18.8-inch screen now. And this is the guy that's Ming Choi Koi. He's always wrong, it seems like, but here he is saying it again. But it says 2026 is when it's going to launch here. You can see it right there. And then down here, this is a little bit more. He's saying that it could be, it says, which he says it could be around the cost of the, the $3,400 Vision Pro down in this paragraph, which is really crazy. But he's thinking it's 18.8 .8 inches because it's going to then, when it's folded, match the, the size of a 13 or 14-inch MacBook, you know, MacBook, basically. Now, overall, though, I want to ask you a question. If you look at this thing here, it's saying it's going to have a digital or like a kind of a, a fake keyboard on the screen. Are you really going to buy something? First of all, if it's over 3000 bucks without a real keyboard and you're typing on a screen, I mean, it has to be in phenomenally good and tons of feedback and stuff. I just don't see this happening. You're going to have to buy an extra, extra keyboard for this as well. I don't think it's going to be, you know, I think some people might buy it like they do the Vision Pro, but I don't think many people are going to buy this. I think it's a waste of their time. I hope you're all having a good weekend. Anyways, I have some kind of cynical stories coming up here. They're funny. I love Apple that you can see this. So take it with a grain of salt. Let me have some good stories and some new products and stuff. Anyways, here it is. AI, Apple Insider, future iPads and iPhones could, could tell stressed users to calm down. So I read this article. Apple is researching how to bring basically sensor technology to give iPads and iPhones the ability to detect stress in a user. All right. So you can see this screen here. You seem stressed. Try shaking this iPad. Anyways, it goes on to say down here that... They have a patent, basically. You can see this little patent. Apple puts out a lot of patents, but they have a patent that's basically going to be a stress meter. It's they actually have it. They're looking at it in the Vision Pro more because it can actually, you know, really measure a lot of stuff there. But then the iPad, I mean, first of all, do you, does it even make sense for them to even worry about that, I guess? Shouldn't they just kind of keep in their lane? I, I don't know. I mean, I think they're becoming more, they want to become more of like a medical, some kind of a medical advisor or something like that. I just think it's the wrong path for them. I just think it's funny. I mean, the last thing I want to do is if I'm looking at an iPad, trying to relax for my day of work, is this thing, have it come back and tell me I'm stressed, right? I mean, the only thing that really stresses me out with Apple a lot of times is when I go in to buy something and I see the cost is way up there. It stresses me out, but I still do it. Anyways, what do you think about this? All right, story number three is good and bad just because you have to wait maybe a little bit over here. It says OLED iPad mini in the works for launch of early 2026. This is from 9to5Mac. So it says Samsung display accelerates OLED business expansion for IT following the start of... So basically it's just saying that they're seeing um, this production start now and they think it's going to be suggesting a potential early launch here of 2026. So if you're looking for basically the iPad mini, which a lot of people love, but you want the OLED or the new version of it, it's not going to be... It looks like it's not going to be next year, but it's going to be into 2026, probably the start of 2026. But if you're hoping for it to come out really soon, it doesn't look probable based off of this article here. Again, you got to take all this with a grain of salt. These are all rumors usually, but still, usually, you know, they have some reason why they're thinking this. All right, so for the next story, I, first of all, I want to just set it up. My last video I did, I kind of ruffled some feathers because I, obviously I put the, the brand new Snapdragon X Plus and X Elite chips against the M3 chips and then against the M4 chip showing that M3's kind of beat it, but you know, who knows? There's a lot of things going on here. The good news is everyone's winners, I said in that article, because basically 
you know, it's good for everybody because it drives competition. So that's really good. But you always get the people that hate Apple and then people that hate Windows and they're always arguing in the thread and stuff. So it's just funny. And it's just something exactly what this article says here. This article's title doesn't make a lot of sense, but I'll explain it. So this is from 9to5Mac. It says, Microsoft's MacBook Air is more like a MacBook Pro. So what this article is basically saying is people are comparing these chips and stuff, but they said that, oh, you're, you forgot to point out that basically there's fans in these new Snapdragon, you know, these co-pilot, I guess they're called co-pilot surface devices. They're going to have fans in them and you're comparing it against the air which doesn't have a fan and here we come back to this whole thing where again the, the m3 chip loses slightly in a couple categories but it beats it in a couple categories and then the other m3 chips obviously beat the you know beat the uh, snapdragon chips you know pretty pretty good so and then the four F, the m4 coming out also will beat it long story short though it doesn't matter because people still complain about the littlest things i found i mean if you read the comments in my last video go ahead and read them all they're they're all like i mean people get so upset over it, it's crazy and in the end of the day i think we're all winners if we can just drive competition i want windows chips to be as good as they can so apples can even be better you tell me that is i think that's the right way to think right who knows all right, so here's an article from 9to5Mac. If you're wondering who the fastest major broadband provider is, take a look over here. So it's, here's the, the title of, of the article here. So we're going to scroll down here. I don't know if I, I guess I have to believe this, but it says national results. So the actual download speed goes to Spectrum, then Xfinity, then Verizon, then AT&T, then T-Mobile. You can see the speeds here. The upload speeds is completely different, though. This is crazy. I noticed this. AT&T is, is the fastest. Verizon, then Xfinity is only 23.3. That's, you know, that's what I have. And then Spectrum's way down at 14, uh, mega, uh, 14 megabytes per second. You can see the difference here. They have the fastest upload, the, or the fastest download, the, the slowest upload speeds. I actually noticed, I was actually using AT&T when I upload my videos. I notice how fast they are, and that's obviously over here. But the download speed's slower, so what do you go with? And then down here it says, let's just see here, it says, and for video experience, this is for video experience. I don't know why it would be much different, but it says Xfinity is number one on both of those, which is crazy. That's what I have. So if I'm watching videos, I guess I have the best, right? And then Spectrum is, where is Spectrum? Spectrum's here and here, Verizon. You can see the results here. So I just thought it was interesting to share. Um, again, this is by 9to5Mac. So what do you have in the comments and do you like it? I think nobody likes their broadband provider because it goes out from time to time. And I think we're all the same. All right, the next article is kind of sad to me. It's actually from Mac Rumors because I think I'm still holding to the fact that the M, what is it, the, the Mac Mini M4 is coming out next month, but I don't know. So over here it says Apple's 2024 M4 Mac Mini, what we know. And based off this article, and this is from Mac Rumors, if you scroll, you know, it's, the design's not going to change really. They're talking about it, but it's, it's going to be the exact same they're saying. The M4 chip's obviously going to be in here. It's going to have a 10-core version of it. They said there's a 9 version of the M M4 chip, but that's going to go into just the air and stuff, so it should have a 10-core chip. But the release, release date, they're saying, is going to be, he says, Pro Models, late 2024. So they're saying at the very end of this year. I think it's going to be next month. I don't know. I'm just taking a total guess. They're saying, Mark Gurman's saying at the end of the year. I'm sure he knows more than me, so it kind of makes me a little bit sad. What do you think? All right. I like to kind of show you really cool products and stuff, and I actually have this, but unfortunately, someone's borrowing it, so I don't have it here to show you, but I'm going to show you the screen anyway. If you want a, a portable charger, this is the best one you can probably buy. I'll have a link to this in the description. Take a look over here. This is the Anchor 3-in-1 Power Bank. Whoops, I just messed it. A uh, three-in-one power bank USB-C charger. It's a 10,000 milliamp charger, so it can charge your phone maybe two times or so. The reason I love this thing is is for a couple different reasons. So if you look at it here, it's got a flip-out plug, so you can you know basically charge it via the wall if you want to, or you can charge it with the cord. The cord actually folds into it, so it, it doesn't come off of it. You have one cord that stays with it at all times, so you never lose the cord. You can see it sitting there. All right, that's number two. Number three is it's got a reading on it that tells you exactly the percentage that it's actually full, 100%, 50% percent, whatever, it tells you exactly where it is. And then finally, um, let me just see in here. You can't really see it here, but there's actually another port in here. I don't know if I can find it in here. <laughs> These pictures aren't the best here, but there's another port in here, like right here, you can see it, where you can charge a second device or you can actually charge it as well. It also has 30 watt fast charging on it as well, which is awesome. So you got, you know, you can charge two devices. You got the, the, the cord that never comes off it. It reads it, you know, the, the, the power on it. It's 10,000 milliamps. And over here, it's by Anchor. It's $44.99. So if you're looking for one that's the most versatile, you can actually plug it into the wall and it'll charge it super quick for you. This is the one I'm telling you. I've used tons of them before. Definitely check this one out. It comes in a different colors and stuff, but long story short, this is good. All right, so this next article here is by Apple Insider. It says, old iPads are a staple in US homes long after they're gone obsolete. So if you look here, this article goes on to say, 
uh, in the 12 months ending March 24, 67% of repeat iPad buyers retain their old iPads, all right? So basically, what they're saying is, compared to iPhones and stuff, in fact, there's a graph down here. So let's look over here. So in this graph, Keptum is here. So Kept is 36%. Over here, but then traded in. Let me just see. Trade in is over here. So trade in iPhones are 42% traded in, right? But but basically, you don't only trade in your iPad 3% of the time. You can see it right here. That's the main difference here. And then there's sold here. Um, obviously, you sell it, but not not too often. You barely sell. Well, I guess five or six percent of each of them. The main thing to take out of this thing is is most people maintain their iPads. They basically use them or give them to family. Um, 30, what is it? 31% of them are given to family versus only 11% on the iPhone. So you can see that they're kept in one way or fashion. The question is, is they go on to say that people are using these as like digital picture frames and other weird things. What do you use your old iPad for? I mean, I'm guessing you probably give it to your kid or something. That's why people maintain them. Plus, there's not a really big resale value on them. But I'm just curious myself. What do you use them for if you're using one of these weird, like they're saying like people use them for like weather things and whatever. But you tell me if you're using your iPad, your, bat, your old one, I guess, for something weird, different than what it's intended for, and then you bought a new one. Cheers. All right. This is kind of interesting here. So it says 9 to 5 Mac. Apple plans Mac OS 15 changes for the controversial system settings app. So if you can remember, a little while ago, everyone complains about this. So system settings on your Mac OS, when you go to it now, it's got kind of a half screen. It used to have a full screen. Now it's saying that they're actually, they've listened to people and they're coming out. Basically, in the next iOS update, it says, what is it? I, Mac OS 15, whatever. They're going to be coming out with a new, uh, they've listened to people and they're going to be reorganizing this thing again. So... I don't know if they're going to be changing the orientation. I hate how they have it like a box. It's almost like the same orientation as it would be on an iPad or an, or an iPad, basically, or an iPhone, but they put it on your Mac OS. I like the bigger, wider one where you can see all the settings at once. But anyways, it looks like re reorganized system settings, but same general design. Oh, same general design, but they're reorganizing the system settings. So there goes <laughs> out the window. I wish they would redesign it, but it looks like they're just reorganizing where everything is. You tell me, is it even needed at this point? I mean, every time we get used to it, it seems like they change it, and it just keeps changing. Why, why do they keep doing this? It makes it more confusing when you move things around once you've finally learned it. Okay, here's the kind of first sale that I think is pretty good. Mm, there's not too many right now. Here on Amazon, I'll have links to this. You can see it's an Apple iPad 10th generation, just the, just the basic iPad, 10th generation, 10.9 inch, 329 right now. So usually 349, which is a good price just to begin with. It's only 6% off, but you get 20 bucks off. So there's not too many sales in these right now, but I figured if this is the time you wanna get one, this is the iPad for me. I don't use it that often. So this is perfect for me. 329 is a great cost. All right, so Apple does things that makes me scratch my head sometimes. And this is a, this is one of those things. Like, why why do this, right? So Apple puts out this list. It's called Apple's Music's Best 100 Albums List is Done. So they listed the best 100 albums of all time. Music, right, from Apple Music. So here it is, the article from Apple Insider. And uh, you can see right here, Lauren Hill. So what does this mean? So we go down to this list here, right? The first one that they pick is Lauren Hill. Now, I mean, I'm telling you right now, that's not the number one album of all time. And I... It might be good. I, I don't. I don't know. But but that's not the number one album of all time. Then they go on to be Thriller, Michael Jackson, Abbey Road, Purple Rain, Blonde, Songs of a Key Life by Stevie Wonder. I mean, some of these things are very controversial. Obviously, Lemonade by Beyonce. I mean, come on now. Um, anyways, you, <laughs> anyways, you get the idea. I'm not too happy with it. So at the end of the day. This is just something for just like my thing with the you know my last video where people are going to fight over it for until the death basically and, you know I think that they're crazy for putting this out but I mean I guess it's just for fun but I guess if we're going to debate one thing is Lauren Hill the best album of all time all right the next article is funny because Apple products are pretty expensive to begin with over here from 95 Mac it says welcome to the ultra era where Apple is making iPhones MacBooks and iPads more luxury than ever so obviously the Vision Pro is 3500 bucks they're going to make this kind of like dual screen thing that's going to be around that same cost but they're saying that they're going to come out with an iPhone Ultra soon which is going to be more than kind of the the Pro Max or whatever they have so if you can imagine they're saying that they're going to they're going to start doing this ultra bland, ultra brand. I can't say that. Um, and uh, but you tell me now. And I, I, again, I'm the person that buys the cheapest of all Apple products. I mean, I'll admit that I buy usually like one up. I buy 16 gigs of RAM or a 512 gigabyte SSD. But I'm not spending four thousand on a laptop. Are you going to be? Are you even open for something like an ultra iPhone? I mean, do you need anything more than what they offer right now? Because I mean, isn't it enough as it is? You can pretty much do whatever you want on it. So why do you need an ultra? Maybe to flex. 
All right, so the next article over here is says, this guy had the, uh, the M4 iPad Pro. He used it for a couple weeks now or a week or two or whatever, and he came out with some conclusions. Um, if you guys hear a little noise in the background, it's starting to pour behind me, so a lot of rain noise. Um, anyways, it says, one week, in the, one week with the M4 iPad Pro, full surprises. This is from 9 to 5 Mac again. So what, is, what did he notice? What are the surprises he noticed? He said, he says, the 13-inch is, is a much better tablet than before. So he's saying that the 13-inch, because of the thinness now, makes it so that it's a lot easier to hold. Is that true? I'm not sure, but maybe, right? Maybe it is. And then he goes on to say the Magic Keyboard is better. Now, I've seen some other things where they're saying it's very similar. He's saying the new Magic Keyboard is one of the best features that you can buy on this thing, and this is what makes it so much better. I don't know. Again, this is all subjective, but this is what he's saying. The, the, then he says the you know the Ultra Retina X, XDR display is brighter, which actually helps him outside, so I can maybe see that as well. But it's the last one that I kind of question. Well, it's not question, but it's funny, exactly what I would have said. So he goes all the way down here, and he says, the M4 doesn't mean much to me. So he goes on to say that the M4 chip means basically nothing to him because the power in the last one was perfectly fine. So in any of his workflows, this doesn't seem any faster to him, which is funny because he's spending a lot of money for it. Um, that's kind of what I said. I mean, how much speed do you need on these things? I know that, again, I know the iPad users that are very specific group. They're going to come after me and say, you know, they'll attack me. But I'm just saying the average user, obviously, or even above average, you don't need that much power. Who knows? All right, so for the next sale we got over here on Amazon, I'll have a link to this. Not bad. If you want a cheap Apple Watch, here's the Apple Watch SE second gen 40 millimeter. It's basically 249 uh, down, I'm sorry, down from 249 to 189. So you're getting what, 24% off, almost 25% off the watch. That's unheard of for Apple. This is actually from the Apple store too. I recommend this if you just want to dabble in it. Not a bad watch, obviously, for time and basic stuff like I like. I don't like, I'm never going to spend 800 bucks on a watch. But anyways, if you want to just get one for 189 bucks and check it out, now's the time. All right, one second, please. It's a pretty good Marzen for sure, although they call it a lager. Anyways, so the next article, the, these are both, the next two are tied into the same, so watch both of them. It says, Apple wants all of TSMC's two nanometer chips, so they sent Jeff Williams in secret. This is from Apple Insider. Apple's preparing to start the production of the two nanometer chips here, and they sent COO Jeff Williams to Taiwan. That's a great trip, right? Right now, I don't know if you realize this, but right now, China has surrounded the entire island of Taiwan, and the, you know we don't know what's going on. Could it be the start of a war? We have no idea, right? That's a great trip to have to go out there right now, <laughs> number one. Number two, if you look at the next article over here, it says, if China invades Taiwan, this is from Apple Insider, TSMC can, can wreck Apple's chip production line remotely. So this is what worries me, right? Apple is surrounded Taiwan. Apple has about still 80 or 90% of all their production in China and also basically Taiwan with the chips and everything. China is surrounded Taiwan right now, and uh, TSMC can wreck the entire production line if they want to. That's great news, right? <laughs> At the end of the day, I don't know. So if you want an Apple product, people always ask me, should I wait or should I not get one today? All right, the next article is another one we talked about, but it's kind of an update from 9 to 5 Mac. It says, Apple elaborates on rare iOS 17.5 bug that resurfaced deleted photos. So if, I'll, I mean, without getting into the article too much, I mean, you know, they're basically not giving too much information. They're calling it rare, but they don't say how many people actually this happened to. So it's saying that it's basically, the company has now confirmed that a few additional details from 9 to 5 Mac, right? So it says, let me just see. It boils down to the corrupt database entry that existed on the device file system itself. So they're saying basically it's not it's not attached to iCloud. It's not coming from iCloud. Now, let me just kind of let me get into the details of this. This was a problem where people's photos from many years ago that they actually deleted were coming back on their phone. Could you imagine what kind of problems that would, would you know, obviously, let's say in your early days, you were dating some people and now you're married. I mean, this could cause a lot of problems, right? So long story short, here we go. This is not a good thing. But Apple's saying it's not iCloud involvement. They're also saying photos reappearing on sold devices. Nope. They're saying that some people were saying that even when they gave their device away and they reinstalled stuff, it was still showing up on there. Apple's saying that's not possible. Those people are lying or something. So you can read through the article. It's not my, you know, not my article, not my, my, my problem, but uh, I haven't seen it either. But a long story short, it's a very, very concerning problem. At the end of the day, though, Apple's just saying it's a rare problem. They don't say how many people this is affected. They don't say exactly the numbers and stuff, which I think they should really disclose because this is something serious. If you delete something, you expect it deleted, it comes back. Even, you know, and they're saying it's some kind of corrupt database, but it had to be then be somewhere else, right? It, it wasn't fully deleted. So uh, who knows? You tell me, would this make you feel good if this is the answer you got? All right, so for the next one, 
People are wondering, 95 Mac, does the M4 iPad Pro have a mysterious sensor in the rear camera? Here's the answer. If you look at this thing, there's like a little dot there, a couple little dots. There is basically, like they, they added a LiDAR and stuff, but there's a little dot in there and people are wondering what that is. So it says M4 I, iPad Pro has a mysterious new sensor. Well, the short answer is yes. The previous generation had two camera lenses and now they added a LiDAR. Basically, and it says, as for the new models, they have the wide camera, LiDAR, microphone, LED flash, and a sensor. But what is the sensor? According to the user guide, it's an ambient light sensor. So everyone can relax, supposedly. It's basically an ambient light sensor on the back of it. They usually use it on the front. There's actually one on the front so that it can change the screen and stuff. But on the back, it's used for like when you scan documents or if you're taking pictures and stuff, it can adjust the lighting and stuff. So that's all that little dot is or that little, you know, whatever you want to call it, sensor. People are kind of freaking out about it. So now you have your answer. It's an ambient light sensor not a big deal all right so here's an article from 95 mac if you're looking for the iphone se the cost is going to go up slightly not a big deal it says redesign iphone se might cost a bit more than the current model is it going to be substantial no it says right here it's going to starting at it used to start at 429 so that's not too bad but it says it might be going up to around 469 because they're adding some new features to it so I mean, you know, obviously inflation and stuff, 40 bucks up. Obviously, if it gets into the five or 600s, then you're dealing with obviously right up against just the iPhone base model. So you don't want to do that. 40 bucks, I'll give it to them. All right, the last two are going to be just some sales that I found. Not huge sales or anything like that, but here we go. Samsung 34-inch Viewfinity. This is actually just a WQHD, and I'll get into the resolution in a second. But it's usually $799, so it's now $449 on Amazon. I don't know when you watch this if it's going to be like this. Probably not. But it's the Ufinity S6. If you like widescreens like this, not a bad idea. I believe it's curved as well, so you got to like that as well. Down here, what's the resolution on it? Let me just get in here really quickly. They don't list the resolution, which is kind of funny. But I did find it somewhere in here, if I can find it right now, which, of course, during the video I can't. It's 3440 by 1440, so there you go. If that's the resolution you need or want... This is the monitor for you. All right, and then finally, I was having trouble finding a lot of Mac sales, so I'm barely scraping the bottom of the barrel here. Here we go from Best Buy. It's an Apple MacBook Air 15-inch. This is the M2 version. 8 gigs of RAM, which I do not recommend, but 512 gigabyte upgraded SSD. $1199. That's the 15-inch, which is hard to get, so that's something. It's also the upgraded SSD something and a discount of around 300 bucks. so not too bad on Best Buy right now. Overall, is it... Mm, but still better than nothing. All right, so we're going to wrap up the video. Um, you know I do these things once a week. I do tons of other videos. I do reviews on hard drives, all Mac products, you know, you name it. I do kind of versatile videos. I do these kind of, you name it. So subscribe if you can. Help off the channel grow. I'm over 25,000 subscribers now, and I'm uh, enjoying the weekend. I have, like I said, one or two beers. I don't care. You guys drink your coffee. I may have some coffee on here, espresso. Do some stuff like that as well, and we'll talk to you the next, next week. These are each week. Eventually a live show too. Talk to you soon. Peace.